Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, somebody was asking some interesting Lua questions. Uh, the question basically was along the lines of, is it possible to identify the largest spot in an area and can you use the line of sight tool to determine how good that particular position is? I said, uh, yeah, there must be a way. So I got out the code and started playing around with it and experimenting a couple of different versions. And I found a bunch of different variations on a theme, but I found something that kind of works and I thought I'd share it with everybody today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by going ahead and creating a new side here. I'm gonna call this side a marker and keep it super simple today. And I'm also gonna go ahead and open up the Lua script console here, keep it nice and simple. One thing I would like to do though is I like to make my stuff a little tiny bit bigger so that everybody can see. So what are we gonna have to do here? Oh boy. So what we're gonna have to do is design a few different algorithms here. The first one we're gonna have to do is to be able to go through a zone and find the highest points. That's pretty easy to do. Afterwards, we're gonna have to design an algorithm that goes through them, picks a bunch of them, and then we're gonna have to design an algorithm that goes through each item and actually checks to see the line of sight with those, which means we have to do a little bit of shenanigans, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So let's do it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable for the starting latitude, and I'll go ahead and also create a variable for the start, uh, ending latitude. These are gonna be required for the purposes of doing my actual loops. So I'll go ahead and create the same exact thing for longitude. I'll hit start lawn, we'll set that to minus 74. I'll do a local start, actually end lawn rather. This is for longitude equals, uh, we'll go to uh, 70 minus 72. I remember positive numbers are gonna to have to come later, so that happens. So we're gonna need some kind of how thorough our search is gonna be our granularity uh, for that particular one. I'm gonna go ahead with the granularity, I'm just gonna call it step. And I'll set it equal to 0 0.01. If you need ultra granularity, you can set that to 0, 0, 001, but all you're doing is increasing your time to process. Again, if you need that much fidelity, uh, <laughs> I don't know. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable to keep track of which spot we found is already the highest point. Obviously, if you set it at zero, it makes it easy. If you're working with Death Valley, you might wanna set that to minus 1,000. Um, then of course, we're gonna need a couple other things. We're gonna need to know what the maximum latitude we detected was. We're going to need to detect uh, where the maximum longitude was. And, and this is the important part, since later on we're going to scan their line of sight, we're going to have to create a unit at those particular positions randomly, and then we're going to have to measure the line of sight. So we're going to need a list of both latitudes and longitudes. So I'm going to say local uh, lat list. Again, keeping this easy, and we'll create this as an empty list, and we'll do local long list. And we'll set that one as a nice empty one as well. Perfect. So those are our initialized variables. Everything's looking pretty good. I don't have to worry about it too, too much yet. So let's get to our loop. So we're gonna use an nested loop for this. I'm gonna say four x equals start long, because that's gonna be our starting point. Uh, we're gonna stop it at the end long. And of course, we're going to go ahead and use step as how far of a uh, step we're gonna be taking in the world here. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my next for loop here. I'll do four y equals start lat. Remember, latitude's up and down like a ladder. And lat, step, and then we're gonna do do again. And now we're gonna to get to the actual thinking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a local variable called elevation, and I'm gonna use the get elevation command. Latitude equals y, longitude equals x. And that's gonna go ahead and get my elevation. So then what I'm gonna say is, if the elevation of the thing I'm checking is, is bigger than my max elevation, then that means we found a new high point in the terrain. So we're gonna say lat max equals X. We're gonna say lawn max, oh, I'm sorry, almost got myself confused. That should be Y. Lawn max equals X. Then we're gonna go ahead and insert these values into a table. The reason we need to insert these into a table is because later on we're gonna go, hey, you know, we should probably go at this. Let's see, lat max. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for the longitude variable. Lawn list, and it's like a laundry list. Woo! And then of course, we wanna make sure the max elevation gets reset to the new value of the elevation that we just discovered. So let's go ahead and end that. Let's end that. And let's end that. Sweet. So what does this do? So we're basically gonna go ahead and go through all the X coordinates, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna go through all the Y coordinates, ba 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 just like that. And once we've identified the maximum elevation of a position, we're gonna add them onto a table. Ooh, apparently a tablet in this case, a table that we can go ahead and use later on. So let's go ahead and copy paste that sucker, run it. We should be getting some things here. We got a bad four limit here, which is 99% of the time means I missed something simple. Uh, start lawn, is this not a value I have? I'm pretty sure it was a value I have. And ah, I found it right there. Got it, good. So this now went ahead and scanned that region and identified those zones. So now we gotta go to the next thing. Uh, we're gonna have to decide how many mountains or high points we want to check. Whoop, uh, we're missing an end point here. Sometimes I always miss one. 
We have an end, we have an end, we have an end. Yeah, we're good. So now I'm going to go ahead and create myself a simple variable. We'll call it the uh, number of samples, for example. And we'll do 10 for now. You can increase that number if you feel necessary. And then I'm going to say, if the size of the latitude list is less than number of samples, um, then we need to set the number of samples equal to the size of the latitude list. Uh, this is important because if we have less things in the list than we can sample, you're going to blow it up in your face. So kind of be mindful of that. Cool. So now we're going to go through and we're going to take some samples here. Uh, we only need a total of 10. So I'm just going to use another quick loop here. I'm going to say for x equals 1, uh, number of samples would be how many samples we're going to take. Um, we're going to go up by 1 and then we're going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to say local y equals lat list of math.floor, the number of items in lat list divided by x. So what did that just do? All that did is it said, take the items, my lat list, see how many there are, and then divide that by the number that we're currently on inside of our loop here. Now then once you've done that, go ahead and give me that particular value and then save it into this local variable called y. So well, we'll do the same thing with x. And you know, we should probably make sure it's working. Let's just try that. Always control A, control C in case you blow up. Boop. Ah, look at that. Now we have all the values and we've taken a sample of 10 of the values we discovered in this loop into this group right here. That's actually looking pretty good. Huh, sweet. All those values are kind of concentrated in one region. Knowing this part of the country, I think I know what region it's going to be concentrated in. Excellent. So we know this works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a unit to those points. Now you're like, why? Well, if we have a unit, we can use the unit to check for line of sight. So we'll just create a temporary unit. Uh, let's create a facility here. Uh, unit name, let's keep it super simple here. Uh, high point, that makes sense to me. A DBID, oop, oop, we're gonna look this up. Let's see here, database viewer. What do we got here? Facilities, uh, there's gotta be a marker for like something. Oh, here we go, geographic, two, three, four, nine, got it. Uh, DBID equals two, three, four, nine. Um, side equals, remember our marker is our side, uh, latitude equals x, longitude equals y, I'll get those backwards about 100 times, trust me. And we should be able to actually test this. So let's see what happens. Control A, Control C, just in case. And we, ooh, what did we do there? Uh, did the units get created? All right. Oh, we're, we're, we're. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> All right. So um, somebody uh, used south instead of north. Uh, that definitely seems like something I would do. <laughs> well, it's good that we just discovered these high points in the middle of Antarctica in case uh, you had any doubt uh, of where those points were. Um, we've, we've successfully identified them. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Let's see here. Longitude, latitude. That was good. That was the correct latitude. Oh, uh, let's see here. Longitude. What were those numbers? Hmm. Minus 74. Minus 74. Is that X or Y? X or Y. Just check to make sure I didn't get my X's and Y's confused here. That's uh, definitely something I would do. Oh, I did. Whoopsies. Let's try that again. Hey, and would you look at that? It found Bear Mountain perfectly up here. No, nah, just north of Salisbury, Connecticut there. Sweet. So, okay, so this is working so far. I grabbed a bunch of points over here in New York. Doesn't surprise me. Again, it's going to grab every uh, every 10th item it finds, it's going to grab. So in this case, it grabbed the 10th, grabbed the 10th, grabbed the 10th, and then wham, it found this really, really, really high point, which is good. That's what we want. Cool. So that's working. Excellent. All righty then. So let's uh, make my screen a little bit bigger here in case uh, you're trying to steal all this as I'm going. Don't worry, I'll paste it in comments. All right, so let's keep going. So now we've done the easy part. Uh, we've found the highest points. We've now created a list of random sampling of, well, that's not technically a random sampling. We've created a sampling of that list. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use our line of sight tool to determine which one of those spots has the best line of sight. Pretty easy. Let's do it. So we're going to have to create ourselves a couple different things here. We'll create our best lat. We'll create ourselves a best long. And we'll create ourselves a best horizon. This just refers to how far of a horizon it can see. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a handy dandy KV in I pairs. I'm just, oh, wait a minute. Can't do that yet. I have to actually grab the units. Whoops. So let's go ahead and grab the side. VP get sides. Then we'll go ahead and say local units equals sides. Remember, we only, we only have one un, uh, side in this one. Side of one dot units. Perfect. So now we have the units. Now we can do that loop. 
KV and I pairs. We're going to do, uh, let's see here, we're doing units. Remember, the only units in the world that exist are those markers, so I don't have to do anything silly here. Uh, let's see here, do, and uh, let's do it. So what do we need to do each iteration? We need to calculate the horizon that we can see. So to do that, I'm going to type in horizon, tool, LOS. We're going to do observer equals um, GUID us, which is v.guid. Our target is going to be an awkward altitude. Uh, in this case, I'll do an altitude of 100. Why not? We'll say mode equals zero because we want a distance. Horizon equals one because we're using visual horizon. Use range limits equals false. Uh, that's really important because our markers don't have sensors. Otherwise, we'd have issues. So what is this going to do? It's going to say my observer is the marker I'm testing. It's going to say, give me a fake target that's 100 meters up. Um, go ahead and tell me the um, radar horizon or the visual horizon. Uh, make sure you use this on visual mode and don't use any range limits. So this will give us a number. And if this, the bigger this number is, the farther we can see from that particular observer. So now what we're going to do is we're simply just going to create a classic thing. We're going to say if the horizon is bigger than the best horizon, that means we found something that can see the farthest so far. Then do an end. Let's see here. Uh, so best lat, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of fancy work here. Send edits. Uh, we'll use the get unit command. We'll say GUID equals V to GUID. Remember, that's the one we're using right now. Uh, side, obviously, we have to use a side here. We'll use side equals marker. Dot latitude. Uh, never work harder than you need to. Boop. There we go. This is going to be best longitude. And we're going to say best longitude like that. And then this is the part I always forget. Best horizon now equals horizon. Otherwise, it's not going to give us our up-to-date one. If we wanted to, we could print it out or something like that. Okay, cool. So let's control A, control C, run. Okay, so it looks like it worked. We don't know. So what I'll do now is I'll create a unit at the point where the best position is. Keep it super simple. So I'll do send edit, add unit. Uh, let's see here. We want to do, woo. Oh, hey, -oh. Uh, Let's see here. Type equals uh, facility. Then we're going to say unit name equals best point. Uh, we'll go to DBID. We'll keep it the same. 2249 side equals marker. Uh, latitude equals best let. Longitude equals best lawn. Close that up. And let's see what happens. First of all, I should probably yeah, delete all the units I've created. There's probably a few now. All right. Let's press the run button. Boop. All right. Now, theoretically, I should be able to press O. And now uh, we should have ourselves a unit here. Ah, we don't have ourselves a unit. Hmm, interesting. So now we're going to find out exactly what happened here. So let's delete all that. Uh, so did it not add it because it didn't have this? Hmm, I'm not sure. We'll have to uh, step through it real quick and see exactly what happened. Let's do something simple here. Uh, let's uh, print best horizon. Why not? Four eyes on. Just in case, just in case. All right, control A, control C, run. 64.6722. Okay. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm totally blind. It was right there. So interestingly enough, uh, the object that has the best horizon, by no surprise, is also the highest point that we have here. In this case, uh, our best point here, this, uh, I believe, uh, if I recall correctly, yeah, this is going to be Bear Mountain in Connecticut. It's pretty high. So just to show, I can flip this on to line of sight tool to show you how this works. And you can see it can see pretty darn lagging my computer. <laughs> yeah, you can see from this mountain, you can see way, 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 way up into there, into those other spots like that. Now, if we picked one of these just to confirm that it did indeed work or did not work, click there again, uh, do line of sight tool, boop. And you can see its line of sight is significantly more limited. Nice. So uh, for this particular project, like I said, I just thought it would be kind of a neat little thing. I, you can see my little cheat sheet there that I was playing around with a little bit earlier to make sure I didn't miss anything. But um, this is a neat little project. And there's a couple of cool little things that you probably can take away from this. Uh, being able to identify, you know, spots this way works really well. Taking a random sample of things uh, works really, really well as well as you can kind of see the way I snuck this in. Creating that unit for the purposes of checking it was pretty good. Uh, one of the things I should do is delete the unit right here after I test it, because that way it just generates it, does its thing, and then ungenerates it kind of thing, just leaving this one right here. But at the same time, it works pretty well. I'll leave this code down in the comments below, but other than that, enjoy.